In the last lecture, we understood the problem. Now we want to see what Power Automate offers so that we can use and handle the errors. The key of all these exception handling or error handling is a feature called configure run after. Basically, we say, okay, run this if the previous execution was successful or was a failure. And that's the bottom line. Now, let's see how it works in action. I'm not going to go back to the complex example. I want to give you a very simple example so we can understand the basics. And then we go back to the original problem and try to utilize whatever we learn in this lecture to solve the bigger problem. So let's go to Power Automate. Inside Power Automate, I want to create a new flow. And that's going to be very simple. It's going to be instant flow. And I want to say error handling basics. Manually trigger a flow, and I want to say create. So after I get the age, I want to put it in a variable. So let me initialize a variable. And this variable, I give it a name as my age type. You guessed it, because it's age, I want it to be integer. And the value, although I can get the age directly from the trigger and put here, I'd rather do it in a separate step at the moment. So I say set variable. And this is the my age variable that I want to use. And the value should come from age. Let's see if we can find it here. If you have it, age and age should get into this variable. So Basically, we accept a string and we try to put it in an integer. Apparently, it's OK. So let's test it and see the result that we get. So let me put, for example, 12, run flow, done, and there we go. I was very much expecting that. We are trying to put a string, although it looks like a number, into an integer variable. So what shall we do? How can we do that? The reality is that you cannot directly put it here. So if you want to work with it, you have to use a small expression to convert that string to a number. So this is how we do it. Click here, and we click on the expression. Inside Power Automate, we have a function called int, and int function accepts whatever you want and converts that string to a number. So when it is here, let me put it outside. I click on dynamic content. I put the cursor inside the brackets and then I pick age from the trigger. Now, this age that comes from the trigger is a string int converts it to integer. And now if I click OK, I actually get the age, convert it to integer, and then assign it to this variable. Let's see if it works this time. Test, for example, 12, run flow, done. Great. So, so far it works and it puts a value inside it, but there is a tiny problem here. Let me just test it again. And this time, instead of a number, I put, for example, AA. Run flow, done, and you guessed what happens. Now, I have a string that cannot be converted to an integer, which is fine. We, are, we were very much expecting that. I know what you're thinking. You can say, Ali, what's the point? Why do you set age as a string? Why didn't you put it as integer right from the beginning. So users basically could not enter the string that is not valid. And we really didn't need to go through all those casts. It's a valid point, but I'm getting into it in a minute. Don't worry. At the moment, what I have here is a very valid scenario. So let's continue. After I get the age, 
assuming that it's a valid number that the user enters, let me put a condition. So I say condition and imagine this is, for example, a membership that has an age restriction. So I would say if my age is greater than, for example, 18, send an email here, send email, and just like before, send email v2. And at the moment, I just send it to myself. Subject, welcome to the club. I would say you are old enough to join the club. And if no, of course, I would send another email. Send email. Just like before, send email v2. Again, I send it to myself. Subject, you are too young. And then come back later. Okay, silly messages. And let's run it. So at the moment, it looks like a very simple workflow that someone enters the age and if that age is above 18, the membership is accepted. Otherwise, it's not. So let me test it again. Test and continue. And this time I entered the age, for example, 33. I click on run flow, done. And there we go. Let it finish the work. And I can go to my mailbox. Outlook open a new tab. There we go. I'm old enough. It says, welcome to the club. And if I just run it again, test, test. And I say, for example, 12, run flow, done. And this time it sends me another message telling me, come back later, you're too young. Good. Now, for the same thing, if I enter something else, I would say, for example, AA, run flow, done. The workflow fails, which I have access to it as an administrator, but the users will not get anything. So what I want to do, instead of failure and nothing else is running after that, if that fail happens, I want to send an email and say, okay, dude, the age that you entered is not valid. And this is how we do it. Right after set variable, I want to send an email. And this send email is gonna go to the same person. Subject in valid age. Good. And the message is going to be, dude, the age value that you entered is not a valid age. Now, here is the thing. In this flow, this email is sent every time. So as soon as the user enters something and submits, this email goes out. And then after that, the condition is checked, which is not what you're looking for. We want this email to go out only if this step, set variable, fails. Now, we get back to, and that is what I call configure run after. Now let's see how it is done. This email should run only after set variable fails. So I click on this guy and I click on configure run after. By default, this step runs if the set variable is successful. I say no, don't send email 
if this one is successful. Send email only if this one, if this one has failed. Great. Done? Not yet. Now we need to go to our condition. But before I go there, keep it in mind. If the set variable fails, this one is executed. If the set variable is successful, send email is skipped. So we want to check the condition only if the send email is skipped, which means we got a valid age. It is converted properly to an integer number. The invalid age email is skipped. And now we can check the condition. Let's go to the condition and again, configure run after. And this time I say, run this only if send an email v2, the previous action, is skipped. Done? Let's see. Let's save it and continue. Test, test. Age is going to be, for example, 14. Run flow, done. So this condition worked. We got you're too young. Let's try the second condition. Test, test. I enter, for example, 30. Run flow, done. And if I go back to my mailbox, welcome to the club. Now let's enter something weird. Test, test. And I call it, for example, ABC. And run flow, done. And this time, Again, an email is sent, but not with the error. This email is sent and says invalid age. Dude, ABC is not a valid age. Great. So now we are well equipped with the mechanisms that it can actually trap the error and react on it and do something right, notify some somebody or maybe take another action to cover up for the error that has happened, or maybe repeat the action, hoping that next time it's going to be successful. Now, here's the thing. If this chapter is not clear, please watch it again. If everything is well understood, let's go back to the previous problem and see how we can trap the error in the invalid price and send a notification that this product update or this product transfer failed.